Meeting to order. Today we'll have the invocation by Councilmember Jeffrey Darby and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilmember Jeffrey. Okay. Will you please stand. Let us pray. Holy Father, we're so thankful for another moment in time. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for your love that is unconditional. We thank you, Father God, for those who serve others. We thank you for the military service persons. We thank you, Lord, for what they do for this country. We thank you, Lord, for the policemen and farmers. We thank you, Father, for every public servant. We pray, O oh, Father God, that you would direct us in this meeting today to do the things that bring glory to your name. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll call. Mr. Montgomery? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Hammonds? Here. Mr. Darby? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Free? Here. Mr. Maggio? Here. Council, in accordance with Louisiana Open Meetings Laws and the adopted Bossier City Council Meeting Rules Resolution, the City Council asks for order and decorum at our meetings. Please silence your cell phones. Anyone wishing to address the Council on any agenda item may approach and state their name and address for the record and shall be permitted three minutes to make their comments on the particular item that's up for discussion with up to four speakers per side. All other audience members are asked to please observe the meeting quietly. <clears throat> and if there is a need for audience members to hold a conversation or take a phone call, you're asked to please step out of the meeting. City of Council appointed Sergeant at Arms have been instructed to maintain decorum and ask anyone in violation to step out of the meeting in order to maintain orderly conduct of the meeting. Uh. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we need to I'm gonna make a motion that we amend the minutes to change the invocation by Vince Maggio instead of Jeff Darby. And the January 18th meeting. Correct. Second. Council, Second. any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Mr. Williams. Motion carries. All right, I need, I want to approve the minutes of the January 18th, 2002 as amended and dispensed with the reading. I'll second that. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. All right, approving today's agenda. Uh, Council, we had one deletion from today. Um, request uh, by the city attorney to remove number three under new business, the red river <coughs> navigation study. Um, and they need to look at the contract a little bit more. I think there were some revisions made to it, and they've asked us to remove it at this time. That is correct, Mr. President. We received a revised proposed joint cooperative endeavor agreement between the city, the parish, the commission, um, the Army Corps of Engineers, and several other entities. The proposed cost to the city of Bossier has not changed, but some of the provisions in the proposed contract have changed, and I need to look, sort of go through those with a fine tooth comb before I present it to the council for approval. You'll bring that back to us. Yes, ma'am. I'll make that motion. Second. Any uh, comment from the audience? Comment from the council? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Mr. President, I move that we uh, accept the agenda as amended. Second. Council, any questions? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Um, ceremonial matters, Mayor? Yes, Mr. President and Councilman, I would like to introduce 
Catriona Lineback, Ms. Louisiana Volunteer. Come on, come on. There you go. Hi, my name is Katrina Lineback. I'm Miss Louisiana Volunteer, and I just want to stop by and say hi. Um, I just won about a month ago, and I'm really honored to be representing Bossier City and also the state of Louisiana at Miss Volunteer America in May. I live in Baton Rouge, but the pageant was held here in Bossier City at Airline High School, and so I just want to say thank you to the city for welcoming us and for being a part of the inaugural year of this pageant. Um, I was able to receive $16,450 worth of scholarship money when I won, and all of the top five also received $10,000 in-kind donation to Bossier City, Bossier Parish, sorry, Community College, which is also a really cool opportunity for all the young women, so I just appreciate you guys um, in the city for being a part of that. So well, we nice to meet you, you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mayor. Please. Hello, Council. Hello, President. I would like to introduce Colonel Mark Demetrison. He's the commander of the Eighth, uh, Second Bomb Wing, Bozier. Bar Barstow Air Force Base, Louisiana. He is responsible for providing combat-ready BFH aircraft crews and associated combat support to conduct global operation taskings. As Barksdale's installation commander, he supports 32 tenant units, including Headquarters, Air Force Global Strike Command, Headquarters, 8th Air Force, Air Force Reserve Command's 307 Bomb Wing. He promotes the welfare of more than 11,400 military and civilian personnel, 6,300 family members, and 2,500 retirees. Colonel Demetrison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have something else for you, sir. So. <laughs> and you know, we don't we we don't usually give this out to a lot of people, but I want to give you a key to the city. Oh, that is incredibly gracious. Thank you, sir. And, and I'm very humbled by this. Thank you so Thank much, you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished counsel. Mr. Mayor, distinguished members of the council, uh, members of the community, thank you for the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Uh, as introduced, I'm Colonel Mark Demetrician. I've been the commander of the 2nd Bomb Wing in Barksdale Air Force Base for roughly 18 months, uh, and this is my third assignment to Barksdale. So I'd like to think I know a little bit about the area, but I know I'm not an expert. Uh, I'd like to give you a brief recap of what it is that your base did over the calendar year 2021, and a little bit of an introduction as to what's gonna happen in 2022. And when you hear me speak and I say we, Please understand that it's not just indicative of those that are part of the second bomb wing or those that are part of Barksdale Air Force Base. You do have to understand 75% of the people that work on Barksdale Air Force Base reside in the local community, whether that be Bossier, Shreveport, Caddo Bossier, Northwest Louisiana, or the greater Arklatex. But I would argue that 100% of us live our lives in the local community. So when I say we, it's not just those of us enlisted officers, civilian contractors working on the installation but it's the community in which we live and thrive in and all that support us. So I'd like to open with a bit of a thank you on that and understanding that what I'm about to list for you does not occur without you personally, as well as all of those of you that you represent both on this side and the other side of the river. So thank you in advance. In recap of calendar year 2021, events out of the base were a little more energetic than they have been in the past. Uh, in recap, we started the year by flying a 38-hour round-trip mission from the base to the Arabian Gulf and back. Imagine being in your car for 38 hours. You get no stops for gas, no stops for food, and no stops for anything else that you may need on a long road trip. That's what your B-52s do out of Barksdale Air Force Base. In February, we went to the Pacific. April, we went to the Pacific. May, we went to the European and Africa theaters. June, we stayed in the homeland. August, we went to the Pacific. In September, we flew all the way to Chile and back, a short 20 hours, and concluded in December with a 28-hour round trip to Japan for an integration event and back. All the while, we train continuously on base and community matters that involve our integration with all of our partners. But most of emphasis here is local emergency management, law enforcement, and first responders. We did thankfully make it through the year without any hurricanes. I'm very grateful for that. But we also worked through two back-to-back -back winter storms, as we all remember, with four inches of snow, sleet and ice, 
the base saw a record one degree as its low temperature and took over $770,000 worth of damage from that winter storm. However, once we reopened the base, we had aircraft flying within five hours. It's an unbelievable feat, and that comes off the backs and the support of the local community. We sent a host number of airmen out to the COVID task forces to allow some relief to medical providers around the world, and more so around the country, a little bit of respite as they were administering COVID vaccinations. And we also supported Afghan refugees coming out of that war-torn nation. On a positive, we partnered with local community members, specifically Louisiana Tech, on a collapsible tow bar. We don't have a reverse gear in the B-52, and so we have to get towed and pushed into place. This may not seem like much, but for us it is a monumental leap in being able to deploy that eight engine giant across the globe. We dedicated a memorial marker to the first aviation death at Barksdale Air Force Base in honor of Lieutenant Purser. We held an extremism standout day. We recognized Juneteenth. We had a law enforcement town hall panel, including law enforcement members from both Shreveport and Bossier cities, as well as both parishes. And we honored the 90th, excuse me, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Furthermore, and this is really thanks to the generosity of the local community, through over $40,000 in donations from the community, we were able to send 60 young airmen and guardians home for the holidays. Thank you for your graciousness. And don't be surprised, our farthest airmen went to Kenya and back. So everything that we do out of Barksdale is at great range, and we're very proud of that. Oh, and we held a little thing called an air show, but I think you're all familiar with that. Moving forward, in calendar year 22, we find ourselves on the precipice of a return to what we call great power competition. Now, I won't get into the great details on that, but understand that we are looking at a peer threat China that we're deeming as our pacing threat and a continued ill-behaving Russia. Bottom line is that what we do at Barksdale, regardless of being in the 2nd, 307th, 8th Air Force, Global Strike, or any of the 50 tenant units there, is to temper great power transgressions, ideally through our presence and partnership with others, but if necessary, by force. 2022 looks to be a great year for us. The 75th anniversary of the Air Force, the 80th anniversary of the Mighty Eighth Air Force, and the 90th anniversary of the base itself. The base looks to prosper from the I-220 gate construction beginning, the weapons generation facility, WGF construction beginning, and the JGSOC refurbishment of a large building so that we can have continued command and control for our worldwide forces. There are plenty of employment opportunities for all out there, ranging from childcare through the trades in our civil engineering section, medical readiness, as well as even summer help, whether working as a lifeguard or maybe doing some pack and move assistance. Finally, in my limited time remaining in command, and it has been an honor to command this unit, I wish to continue to build further engagement with the local communities and to explore dual use operations between Shreveport, Bossier, Barksdale, and the greater Northwest Louisiana. Thank you so much for the honor, Mr. Mayor. Distinguished members of the council, thank you so much for your time. If you do have any questions, I'm available to entertain it. But on behalf of the men and women of Stryker Nation, thank you for what it is that you do for our community. Thank you, Colonel. You can also tell him I flew the B-52 the other oh. night. <laughs> we are still doing some repair damage from a B-52. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the uh, parking lot. <clears throat> All right, we got some bids. <laughs> Witness opening of sealed bids for bid number P22-01. 2022 on-demand concrete repairs for public works. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, the engineer's estimate for this project is 900,000. Uh, there was no addendums. Our first bid is going to be from F.J. Burnell. That bid. Uh, amount is for $995,500. Their bid bond is included. That is 995-500.00. Our 
Her last bid is from RVP Construction, Inc. Their bid bond is included, and it's for $953,100. That's 953100.00. Uh, I would say we can take these bids under advisement. Uh, however, it is based on the actual quantities, so we would not be going over the 900,000 um, estimated amount. So with that being said, I would ask that you approve the reading of the bids. So moved. Second. I move a second. Second. <coughs> Any questions, Council? Let me, let me ask you something. Um, even with a change order, we won't go over? No, sir, because this is a on demand and it's based on actual quantity. So when they get a call that they need that fixed, we know right ahead we have our budget for 900000 So we're just going to pay up to that amount. And if questions? you have any more questions, uh, Wade could probably answer them. Wait, is it where you at? Oh, there. Is this for all the districts citywide? I got back over you with the bus, too. Come on, old man. <laughs> oh. Good afternoon. This is the unplanned streets and drainage, different from our uh, streets program that uh, engineering uh, puts forth. Uh, the, the quantities are stated in the bid packet and we won't go over those quantities uh, and exceed the $900,000. But this is a citywide though? It's a citywide, yes, okay. it's for all five districts. Yeah. And I think, I think I sent everybody a spreadsheet and we will uh, populate that as, as repairs are made, I'll send it to each one of you so you know where the repairs are being done in your districts. Okay, that'd be good. Okay. Council, any more, more questions? questions? Any questions from the audience? Thank you, Wade. All right, Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Unfinished business. Adopt an ordinance to amend Ordinance 17 of 2021 to replace the Bruce Street Force Main, adding $195,000 to come from the Sewer Capital and Contingency Fund to cover all project costs and authorizes the city to enter into a contract with David Lawler Construction, Inc. for completion of the work. Final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance allocating $300,000 to come from the Water Capital and Contingency Fund for on-demand on demand water meter purchases. Final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Questions from the audience? Okay, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance amending the Bossier City, Louisiana Code of Ordinances, Section 78-7, Classified and Unclassified Service, generally to include the position of a tax compliance and processing manager in the classification plan, uh, assignment of job classes to grade levels. Final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Audience, any questions? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate $12,124 to come from the hotel motel taxes fund to be used for the tree removal project for the Brookshire Grocery Arena. Final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Yeah, do we know when this job is going to start? Did they give a time frame on it? I know some of the trees down there are kind of dead and yeah, they, they, fall on somebody's car or something like that. Yeah, from the snowstorm. We, we did a lot of them last year from the snowstorm that some more died this year. We can find out tomorrow because 
We have okay. a meeting with Rebecca tomorrow. <clears throat> Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. New business. Adopt a zoning ordinance, first and final reading, favorable by MPC. Petitioner Ruben Chavez, Pedro's Bossier City, LLC. Location 2400 Airline Drive, Bossier City, Louisiana. Request conditional use approval for the sale of high and low content alcohol for on-premise consumption. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to this establish a four-way stop at the intersection of Sunflower Road and Rosemont Place. First reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Council, my name is Steve Pinkley. I live there in Plantation Trace Garden Homes. Our house backs up to Sunflower there, and uh, I'm greatly in favor of that. Uh, they've put sidewalks in and a crosswalk right there where you're talking about, but that is almost like a raceway any time of the day. They could sit out there and make everybody sour for the city all day long. Uh, so I think this, this is a very good motion, and... I'm all in favor of it, and I appreciate y'all thinking about it. Thank you, Mr. Pinkley. Yes, sir, Mayor. Can I, can I call Ben up and ask him? He did some studies on this thing. you mind Ben coming up? I'm sure it was traffic engineering, huh? Um, yes, sir. So at the request of uh, Councilman Hammonds and Councilman Smith, we put some traffic collecting uh, devices out there and, and got some data and that's one of the reasons why this particular ordinance is before the council um, long story short the data when we're looking at that from an engineering perspective we're looking for warrants for four-way stops and that particular location did not warrant a four-way stop so it's ultimately the council's decision to, to put that there if I could, Ben, you know, dur during the time that the study was done was at a time that um, we had a very high police presence out there from the request, one of me and of just about every everybody that, that lives and backs up to Sunflower Road right there. So while they were doing the study, I know the traffic study did not show the speeds and everything that um, that we were hoping for of everybody going up and down the road, but a lot of that was due to the fact that the, the, the police department was doing such a fantastic job out there running radar, writing tickets, and everything like that. Um, another main concern um, of mine, and I know Mr. Pinkley, we, uh, that he backs up to the fence right there, um, that, you know, a car at a high rate of speed coming through that fence or, or anything like that. Sunflower Road is such a long strip um, it, it's it's basically get at one end see how fast you can make it to the other and also with the crosswalk that comes right across there you have the um, you have the sidewalk that is on the north side of the road then you have to take the crosswalk across to get on the south side of it right there at that intersection and um, you know a lot of times nowadays people don't know what a crosswalk is they don't know to stop so people can you know the pedestrian has the right of way so um, that, that's, that's why I was favorable of um, introducing this ordinance. And we did collect some speed did data you? out there. And to your point, the average speed out there is 30 plus miles an hour. The posted speed limit is 25 miles an hour. So that was something that we, you know, we, we did collect while we were out there. And, and all that, Ben, did you? research any about wrecks, wrecks out there? Uh, got some information there's been I believe uh, three traffic incidents uh, at that intersection specifically at Rosemont and Sunflower since 2012 two of those crashes occurred between 2019 and today's date 
you know, just to give some statistics related to the traffic counts. Um, and this is, we get into the weeds here when you start talking about the manual and uniform traffic control devices. You might hear the term MUTCD thrown out there a lot. That's what engineers use to determine where we put traffic signs and signals and how that all of that works. So, you know, within that confine, you want to see that feeder traffic on Rosemont, they're looking for 300 vehicles every hour on Rosemont coming on to Sunflower over an eight hour period. And within our study, we only saw 400 vehicles on Rosemont entering Sunflower over a 24 hour period. And so that's why we say, we, we mentioned this to, to uh, Councilman Hammonds that Ideally, you'd get that data, it warrants the signal, and we go put the, or it warrants the four-way stop, and we put the stop out there and wouldn't be before council, but um, you all know your districts and needs. Uh, uh, you live in them and understand those all day long. So. Well, to a little bit of the defense coming out of Plantation Trace Garden Homes, you've only got 99 houses, so people leave in the morning going to work, you're not gonna have that amount of cars Correct. coming out of a subdivision if everybody's going to work. So, I mean, Correct. I mean, I agree with your study. I understand that, you know, it's terminology and everything y'all look at, but to expect that many cars coming in and out of a subdivision, you know, every hour, I mean, that would be everybody coming home, you know, eight times a day. And, um, you know, it's just not gonna happen. Thank you. Ben, ben, what, what would be the adverse effect of putting the four-way? The adverse effect could be a number of things. Um, one being uh, folks traveling Sunflower are not used to there being a stop sign there. So when the stop sign gets put up, folks on, you know, Rosemont may think that they have the right of way to turn and get, get hit by a car just because of the decades of there not being a sign there. Um, the manual and uniform traffic control devices specifically states that stop signs shouldn't be used to curtail speed. Um, you know, that's not something that you would normally deploy to get drivers to slow down. Um, but that's, you know, so that being said, you could have increased speeds up to the stop sign and then, you know, they stop and you know, they, they're used to going a million miles an hour down Sunflower Road, and they're going to speed up, hit the stop sign, and then go and speed up on their way through there. But at least they will stop right there where the yes, sir. pedestrian crosswalk is that, you know, the city put that sidewalk in for people to use it, and it is getting used more and more every day. Um, when we have nice weather, there's a ton of kids coming out of the preserve subdivision that is steadily getting more and more houses back there. Those kids come to the front of the subdivision to walk on that sidewalk and go to other places, you know, to other parts of the, the three other subdivisions that are there. Council, any more questions? I, I'd just like to say that I'm, <clears throat> I'm in favor of this as well because there's not much you, else we can do. Uh, city's not going to invest in speed bumps that we have to constantly maintain uh, there's we're not going to raise the speed limit because if you make it f from 25 to 35 people just go 40 and 50 so we're, we're kind of stuck with that. <laughs> yeah so we're kind of stuck with is this the best solution probably not but is it a solution that could have an effect I think so um, my family walks down the sidewalk every weekend when it's nice and warm weather um, and I'd love to be able to know that when my daughter is uh, out there crossing, because uh, we'll, we go down there, my in-laws live in Plantation Trace, so we walk to their house quite frequently during nice weather days. Um, it, it, it will give, I think, me and other residents that live in that area peace of mind. So while it's not the perfect solution, it is something. And, and might I interject, assuming the council elects to put that four-way stop there, if for some unknown reason it becomes an issue it's really easy to take the signs up exactly thank you Ben thank you is there any more questions from the audience yes ma'am I'm 
Virginia Pinkley, and I live at, in uh, Plantation Trace Garden Homes, and my yard backs up to that stop sign where it would go. I have observed dump trucks, cement trucks, 18 wheelers now coming through there. I think Sunflower is an alternate route for Jimmy Davis to go out to 71. And it is, if that would keep them from going through there, I'm all for it. I used to walk out there. I don't go out there anymore because nobody would stop when you cross the site, you know. So I'd appreciate it if y'all would really consider it. Ms. President, let me get her address for the record. Yeah. Address 302 Afton Circle. Afton? I have the Gladys Kravitz view, just to give you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. President, um, I guess I don't know if I want to ask you or Councilmember Smith or Councilmember Hammonds, what, is there a petition by your constituents in that area? resident that the, a written petition uh, I, I, I don't have one this was brought up by mr. Hammonds no I mean there, there's not there's not a petition I mean just kind of like I don't think there was a petition on the last stop sign we just approved a couple of weeks ago for councilman Maggio down in his district I don't I don't think he had a petition either I mean if we need a petition I can I can surely get one yeah no I, I, I just wanted to know for the record if there is a petition, that can, the citizens in that area uh, demand that you do something. I've had a, a, a four-way in District 2 in the past, so I can appreciate the necessity of it. All right. Any more questions? Council? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance authorizing Mayor Thomas H. Chandler to execute the attached joint cooperative endeavor agreement for a Red River navigation study and appropriating $50,000 from the general fund fund balance. I'm sorry, that one was just removed. I apologize. I didn't take it off there. Shame on you. I know, right? Introduce an ordinance authorizing and approving the engagement of Fontenot benefits and actuarial consulting to provide the necessary actuar actuarial valuations as required by the published GASB statements 67 and 68 for the policemen's and firemen's pension and relief funds. First reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to repeal ordinance numbers 126 of 1979, 62 of 1982, and 36 of 1986, and to enact this ordinance which shall replace section 28 of the Bossier City Code of Ordinances entitled Water, Sewers, and Sewage Disposal to regulate, regulate the use of sanitary sewage facilities serving Bossier City, first reading. So move. Second. Mr. President, I request just a brief thumbnail explanation of this uh, ordinance if Ms. Nottingham was so. Yep, th thank you. I, I tried to find something. Please to do that. that. <laughs> oh, come on. Not Ben. Pretty simple. Um, I'll, I'll boil it down as best I can. A lot of what we put in there, we use the time to kind of update that ordinance. It's very old. Um, so a lot of the codes and regulations that were being uh, noted in there are outdated. So we took the opportunity to marry this language with permits and inspections language such that, you know, the ever-changing codes will always be the prevailing code for Bossier City. Beyond that, um, the Northeast Wastewater Treatment Plant is discharging into Red Shoe Bayou, and because of that, we have, we have in, increased permit limitations, which require our industrial, uh, con, you know, industrial waste 
uh, customers to meet certain guidelines. So if you look in there, the main thing that we changed was the technically based local limits, and specifically those limits for the Northeast Wastewater Treatment Plant. And those industrial customers have been notified this is something that DEQ is requiring that we put in our, our language, so it's more of a formality. Is it going to impact the consumer or the commercial user? We do not think so, no, sir. Council, any more questions? Any questions from the audience? Thank you, Ben. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to amend ordinance number 11 of 2022 to correct typographical errors. First reading. So moved. Second. Does anyone, Angela, or anybody need to say anything about that? It's just typo typographical, that's all. Errors? Okay. Council, any questions? Questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to reappropriate $1 million from the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Phase 1, formerly U.S. Highway 80 Improvements, Traffic Street to Kelly Avenue project to the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway Phase 2. First reading. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Ben, is there anything to say about that? Council, just real quickly, um, this this is a recommendation on behalf of the engineering department. The original bid with Best Jet was just shy of eleven million dollars, and prior to our uh, engagement within the engineering department, um, there had been a one point two million dollar addition to that project. Um, there were several other change orders throughout the course of that, but uh, we're anxious to close that project out, much like we've done on several other projects, and there's a surplus of funding there. We're suggesting moving that to the phase two portion of the carriageway, but ultimately that's y'all's decision to make. So, let me get this correct. What well, you just said, the project phase one is complete, and, and there's it, been a $1.2 million change order after the project was complete? Um, I don't know that I understand the question. It wasn't after the project it was complete. There were multiple change orders throughout the course of that project. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I, I would just like to see the city at getting to some point where we bid a job and it comes in somewhere close to estimate. Uh, I mean, I, I know that's, that's not at that big a thing to ask but uh, I mean it's just like every time we turn around I mean it's just more money and more money and more money and more money going out and um, at some point it's got to stop I mean that's the way I look at it in my business but um, that, that, that's all I got to say on it Mr. Rauschenbach um, I would have at request um, for the new councilman that uh, we go back to all of the issues that uh, we encountered, and you know the numerous ones of unmarked water lines, the whole routine, so that they get a understanding of um, when unknowns are encountered, you can either stop the work or you can continue the project. And uh, certainly everyone in this room would wanna continue the project. So I think it would be advantageous to understand the history of the jobs, how they were bid, and how we got here today. Yeah, and, and excuse me, to kind of add on that, just Brian, so you're aware, when we, when we stepped into the engineering role and I was looking at pay applications that, that had been approved and work that had been approved prior to my involvement, we were looking at a $1.2 million deficit in what had been allocated for that project. So in order to ensure that 
when the contractor's pay applications came in. I mean, this is work that had already been approved and complete, if, if I'm making sense here. So work that's been approved, that work's complete. It was added to the project, but there was this much project left and this much money in the bank, okay? So we worked with the contractor and the council to get that plussed up um, and, and to expedite getting through with all the various challenges on that, on that job. It was very difficult. That's a very old part of the community. Um, there were a, a myriad of, of water and wastewater related issues and trying to get all of that infrastructure put together there. Um, the good news is uh, when we plus that up, we plus that up based on plan quantity. And so now that we're at the end of the project, have everything reconciled, there's a surplus of money in there. So we're not over budget. We want to take that surplus and allocate that to another project. I don't know if that makes sense, and I'm happy to put, put together some detail on what those changes are. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would agree. Like I mean, yeah, we, we weren't, um, and you know, me and Councilman Smith, we weren't privileged or Councilman Maggio, you know, to everything that went on, you know, before before we took these seats. Now, this million dollars that you're gonna, that you want to take and put it to carriageway phase two. Yes, sir. I mean, is that just for a buffer? Is that, or are you all, are we already needing that money? There are other projects that will come along with the carriageway that include Citizens Bank Drive lighting, landscaping, and things like that that have yet to be let. So we would suggest using this money towards those projects. You can tell him about the stormwater for yeah, pump station for Citizens Bank Drive that was required by DOTD, which we have nothing to do with other than follow their rules and say, yes, we're going to do this and build the road. So um, I, I do think it's important. And for the record, all of this was public record. So through all the other previous council members, this was open and presented to the public. So everyone was privy to that information. Uh, Mr. Markenbach, <clears throat> would you give a ballpark of that surplus, that number? In phase one, mm -hmm. you're looking at about one and a half million. Okay. Um, we're, we're, the council's allocated $400,000 within that phase one project to be used for beautifying that corridor. Mm -hmm. So we wanna keep that money there for that. Um, and then we've also allocated another $100,000 for some minor, I'd like to tell you, Brian, that that project's 100% closed out, but it's not. Um, there have been landowner challenges and other things no, that no, we've I faced through, all that. through there. Yeah. So we've left a little bit of money to reconcile what little bits left on that, on that project but we want to close it out. We, uh, frankly, I think it's good news. We're reporting to the county. You've got some money there yeah, that, that, that we'd, we'd like to, yeah, that's to my, that's, allocate. That's my take that for once, wow. there's a surplus, there's money, you know, versus always having to make more money available to, to, to this project. So I, I like that part of it. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and Brian, and we can, we'll get into this a little bit if you'll allow on the street project, but a lot of times when we come to the council for change orders, the council's been gracious and, and studious with the funding, and we will bid a project. Contractors love working in Bossier City. Bossier gets phenomenal pricing for projects, and usually we come in below our estimated cost for that. So a lot of times when we come to the council for change orders, not all the time, things happen. A lot of unforeseen subsurface conditions occur that are beyond you know, our ability to mitigate against. But a lot of times when we're asking for a change order, we're, we're, we're requesting we use that, that delta between what was budgeted and what that bid came in to do more work. We find a dump below the highway on, on 71 two down there yeah. that we had to clean up. DOT's, DOTD's cost us millions of what they made us add, which we didn't know nothing about until they, until they said do this. We don't always have the, the last say, so it's been a lot of things. It's been a challenge to, to get this thing done. So I, what, what Council Montgomery was saying a minute ago, the DOTD is now requiring something else where we're coming out we're on the highway three i wouldn't say now requiring but as a part of 
of that overall project, DOTD did not allow for the carriageway project to, to discharge stormwater into Benton Road. And so additional measures had to be implemented to mitigate against that. Which is going to be about two and a half million dollars. expensive. Yes, sir. And which is really pretty crazy, too. Uh, ben, I think you answered my question, but we're, we're, leave, we're leaving enough money to do all the beautification and landscaping. Yes, okay. and if you look at the body of the ordinance, it specifically indicates those, those dollars for that. Are we, just, are we going to wait till we do it all at one time, or what, do you, is there a timeline on when we're doing that? We're pressing to get it done. It's really not our desire to wait for it all at once. Okay. Um, it's a pretty complicated design, uh, you know, and ultimately that design needs to be approved by y'all. We have some vignettes there that uh, we've been working through and, and want to make sure we do the city justice with that. Council, any more questions? Any questions from the audience? Thank you, Ben. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ben. Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to approve report of change order number one for the South Bossier Redevelopment Project with an increase of 38 days. First reading. So moved. Move. Second. Council, any questions? That, that, they're going to give them enough time. <clears throat> that 38 days. I know there's <clears throat> still a lot of work to be done. That gets us up through today. So five of those days were for weather-related uh, issues in October, and then there were 33 days added due to some unforeseen subsurface conduit issues that they were running into out there. I don't want to put my hand on the ch chopping block and say that's all they need, but that at least gets us plus up to where we are right now. And they're moving along out there. Uh, of course, we've had some issues with some homeowners and things like that, but just, I know y'all Typical think, construction project. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any more questions for the council? Audience, any questions? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to approve report of change order for the citywide <coughs> street improvements phase three with an increase of $219,206.08 for a total contract price of $1,002,754.08. First reading. So moved. Second. Second. Clinton, is this your turn, huh? I'll, I'll answer this. Oh, come <laughs> on. Put him on the hot seat. <laughs> why don't you pull a chair up? <laughs> There's a chair there. My people, man. Um, <laughs> Again, we think this is good news. So to give the whole council sort of an update on where we are with, with the citywide street program, this particular phase, phase three, was for districts two and three. So that's Councilman Darby and Williams District. Um, the, you know, the, the main focus of this change order, we repaired all connections in the entire curb and gutter for Michael Street. That was over 3,000 linear feet of curb and gutter. That's District 3. Michael Street. Yeah. That's in, in Bubba's yeah. district. Can, can I say that before you keep on going, Ben? Sure. Michael Street was, the street was so bad. I mean, there was holes, it was raised up, there was <coughs> ditches in the street, you know. And in our opinion, there was be no reason to overlay the street. The drainage was you go out there. I've got video of water going up in in driveways, and unless we did something with the drainage, we'd be doing the street every year. So I called my good friend, Mr. Darby. I needed one hundred forty thousand dollars to do the drainage in the street. And Mr. Darby, I wrote him a hot check for it. <laughs> but, but anyway, we need to do it. We need to do the drainage. We need to do the street. So I'm sorry, Ben. And it turned, I would say, you know, it, that's a difficult drainage problem out there. There's no subsurface pipe, well over 1,000 feet of street. Um, you know, we reshaped, regraded. All of that was done in the field. Um, and the, our estimate on that project for, for both of those districts was about $1.1 million, okay? When we opened bids, the bid came in at just a little over 780000 
and that was for everything. So all the streets within those two districts that we had planned for got complete. And then we added this work in there to get Michael done properly. Um, this has been sort of our mode of operation since we've been managing this program. We didn't have a topographic survey and a bunch of engineering work done. We did soil borings, and our goal was to put as many of those dollars in the pavement, but to not put good money after bad. The city's done that in the past. We, we were doing our dead level best not to do that moving forward. So, you know, some, some other items of note uh, back in November, the November 30th council meeting, we approved a similar change order. Um, it was actually a little bit more money, and that was for the phase two streets, and that was in your district, Mr. Hammonds. And again, that was based on a, 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 a delta between what was bid and how much money was there, and we worked with, with that district to do more work. Um, Phase one street project came in 17,000 under the original contract amount. Phase four came in 113,000 under the original contract amount. Um, just to kind of highlight what Clinton mentioned to the council uh, last month, in nine months, we, we completed 2.65 miles of street work that's not even administered by the engineering department. That's always historically been public works. That's more streets than the prior two years. So we were able to do a whole lot more. And again, we consider this a very good thing. Um, we're looking forward, we've met with the council already. We're looking forward to teeing up the 2022 project and, and are hoping for similar, similar results. That, that actually came in, what, 80,000, you know, when I met with y'all last week, we're going over to my district, that we thought it was going to be higher that y'all were talking about. So it actually came in, that change order came in under what you were. Um, under the under what you were, yeah, amount. Yeah, so that's good. And I would say, by and large, I, I, I wouldn't call, we didn't bat a 1,000. Um, it's hard when you got that much work going on, trying to watch every contractor out there. But I think overall, I'd give that project an A. I think the, the citizens of Bossier City got a lot of bang for their buck on that. The last, last thing, Ben, um, has my 143,000 <laughs> transferred back to District 2? You, you didn't catch that check? <laughs> I don't know about that check. I'm looking for that money in, in District 2. But we're going to make sure you're taken care of, Councilman okay. Harvey. All right. uh, we, I, I think you and Clinton have been in conversations. Yeah. We, we met with Councilman Williams, so we're, we're working through that program right now. Okay. Brian, I know, I know, man, none of us like change orders. I understand it. But like, like we just said, man, if, we, if you're going to do it, do it right. Oh, you, you I, may go I understand over, that. You know, I mean, I'm the, road in the construction business, so I, believe me, I understand change yeah. orders. Um, I, I do understand them, I think, there, but there is a, a way that, you know, you kind of get a little bit better where they're not so significant. Yeah, but if you're on the ground somewhere, something pops up, like, yeah. let's do it while we're here. You know, let's just get it done, get it done right. That's, that's my thing. There was a time when I worked real hard to save a nickel, and, and that, that I've learned that that's not always the best course of action. Uh, we share your, your sentiments when it comes to change orders. It's a lot of work, a lot of time and energy. I promise you when we bring these things to the council, it's not because a contractor said, hey, we want some more money. We go, okay. There's a lot of back and forth on those things before we get to the point that we're comfortable, um, you know, authorizing that work and bringing that before the council. Any more questions, council? Any questions from the audience? Thanks again, Ben. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Coleman Street's going well, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Introduce an ordinance to approve report a final change order for the citywide street improvements sidewalks with an increase of $4,283.67 for a total contract price of $263,058.67. Final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Council, <coughs> excuse me, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. <coughs> Motion carries. 
Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring or promotion of a recreation supervisor and backfilling any position this may create for parks and recreation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? <clears throat> any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the promotion of an EMS supervisor position due to retirement. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a full-time clerk, ty clerk typist position due to a resignation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a meter reader due to a resignation in customer service department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of an accounts clerk to due to a resignation in the customer service department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Please cast your vote. Motion carries. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of an information services system specialist due to a resignation in the information services department. First and final reading. So moved. <clears throat> Second. Council, any questions? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Reappoint Steve Armitage as a representative for the personnel board with required referral letter from Bossier Parish Community College. Appointment effective February 1st, 2022 and expires February 1st, 2025. So moved. Second. Any questions, Council? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. President, I'd like to say uh, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, you know, we have a lot of boards that we appoint people to. Um, and I'm going to vote for this because I think it's important to have good people. But uh, it might be good for the city if whenever some of these appointments come available, if we put it out to the public and maybe see if we can get some diversity, um, some different thoughts um, and ideas from other people. Um, that way we can continue to grow as a city, a parish, um, and, and, and just further move us forward. So just food for thought for moving forward. We have ours, uh, you know, I sent out an email. Uh, we have one to the personnel board, too. I got an email from Mr. Darby. Uh, that's, that's the only one I got. So I was going to put it on the agenda for next week. I must, not, I must not have seen it. I don't care if you. We got his resume and everything. But we've been, we're actually overdue on it, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, we, we just have lots of boards throughout. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, sometimes yeah. people may not know that a physician's available and might be willing to serve, maybe not in this capacity, no, but they'd be willing to volunteer their time on a board. Yeah. So. Mr. Smith, I'll send you the email again, um, and if you have recommendations that you want to put, we the council has a, pers a position available on the personnel board at this time. Okay. All right, any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Motion carries. Approved parade permit fee waiver for Stockwell Stallion Spirit Sprint, April 2nd, 2022. So moved. Second. Council, any questions? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Mr. Hammonds. Did it not go through? There we go. Motion carries. Uh, council, any announcements? I would like to uh, 
Well, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm not a council. Oh, go I'm ahead. Um, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, council and mayor. Uh, I would like to tell everyone that Tinsley Ballpark will be open this Saturday. It might be playing in snow and ice, but it, it'll be open, and I want to thank Coach for taking care of that. I also want to thank our city attorney, Charles Jacobs, for helping out getting that thing started and getting going. Thank you, Charles. It was a group effort. <laughs> <laughs> All right, meeting adjourned.